Hey, what's up everyone? It's Brian Altano and Tom Marks from IGN, and we got a Nintendo Switch Lite, and we've spent tons of time with it, or at least a good amount of time with it. A fair amount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think our first impressions are, are this is a really cool, really awesome, really wonderful new addition in Nintendo's long legacy of fun, strange, quirky handhelds that they've been putting out for years. So I, let's yeah. start with, what, what do you love about this thing? Uh, I really love the form factor. I really love the size. I really love the weight of it. It is super lightweight. Like it, it feels, it is heavier than most phones, but it feels kind of on par in its construction and, and the, the feel of it in your hand. It's got a really nice matte finish. Like I really, I really dig that. Some people in the office were saying they kind of weren't as into the matte finishes as maybe some, but I, what, what I like things that. I was saying about that is that if you have a Nintendo Switch at home, flip it over and touch the kickstand on the back. Yeah. It feels like the Switch Lite is made entirely out of regular Switch kickstand. Yeah. Which is a weird chemical, but pretty there much. It is. This is like a sampler for you. Yeah. You just rub that and you know yeah. what it is. Uh, I, I really like that part of it. Uh, also, this size-wise, I was worried it was going to be too small. Like the screen was going to mm -hmm. be too small. Um, playing it, it didn't feel much smaller at all. And it wasn't until I went back to the base switch where I was like, oh wow, the base switch is much, much bigger. Right. And I think that's actually a really good thing because it means that the Switch Lite doesn't feel too small and suddenly the Switch base actually does feel like kind of a, a step up in a certain way that the, the $100 extra a little more justifies. Right, so you got used to it pretty quickly, which is, I, yes. I think if you look at like older Nintendo handhelds, some of the ones, uh, something like say the Game Boy Micro, which was obviously a compromise, but still really fun and adorable. Um, this is not really like that. This is like totally playable, totally usable. Yeah. You and I played a match of Smash Brothers against each other on this, on one screen, uh -huh. um, and I synced over Bluetooth the Joy-Cons from my Switch, yeah. and we fought each other in a two-player match, and I could pretty much see everything that was going on. It worked decently. Mm -hmm. I think if you uh, since added it, two more players and items. Yeah, if you yeah, added two more players gotten... and items, it would have gotten a little chaotic. Uh, one of the disadvantages of that is it doesn't have a kickstand, right? Yep. So if you're doing any sort of local co-op thing, you have to like this is a Genki stand. You have to actually get a third-party stand mm -hmm. or just prop it up. I don't or know have your friend you hold it the whole time, like I did with Tom. Right. That was that was one you yeah. know one way of doing it. I mean, maybe you liked that. That was a little less good for <laughs> me. I will say. Uh, a Another cool thing I really like about the Switch Lite is the buttons uh, outside of the D-pad, obviously, which is brand new, um, which like I, I think is pretty good. I don't, I haven't really tested it with like a bunch of like you know very twitchy Metroidvanias. Like I'd love to yeah. see how it performs with something like Hollow Knight. And I've been, I tried it with Hollow Knight. I tried it with Celeste. I tried it with uh, a lot of different platformers. I tried it with Mario Odyssey for certain things. Um, I've been trying a bunch of different games, and the D-pad is really nice. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not as good as a full-on like controller D-pad, but it's better than the directional buttons, that is for sure, on the base Joy-Con. Yeah. And it's better even than something like the Hori third-party Joy-Con D-pad, which was always a little squishy to me. It, it doesn't have the click of something like an Xbox One D-pad, but it definitely is like a really nice D-pad. You can roll your thumb between stuff really easily. It reminds me of something that we would have seen on like the Nintendo DS Lite or the DSi, which yeah. is like sort of a smaller scale one, but totally serviceable for you know most of your, if not all of your needs. Yeah. Um, and I do like the face buttons a lot, the ABXYs, because they are now, instead of being raised with a sort of circular top, they're flat. Yeah. And, and a little clickier. Little same, harder edges. Same goes with the sh uh, shoulder buttons, right? They have this sort of a clickiness to them that the, I really like. The, yeah, it's it's similar, but it's it's everything about it just feels very, like, crisp, yeah. right? It, it feels like a very really well put together thing to the point where using it made me look back on my base switch and was like, oh, that's a little clunky, right? Like yeah. there's a lot of wasted space here and there. The fact that it's all patchworky is like, compared to how slick this is, yep. it, it, it shows it up in design full on. Absolutely, this feels like one piece of kit, which it is because the Joy-Cons don't detach or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas your base switch has, you know, sort of that Joy-Con wiggle. It's got the mm -hmm. kickstand on the back. There's a, a sort of double bevel thing going on on it. So, yeah. you know, and I love my, I don't I just, I don't want to be like, oh, the new kid's here. Let's throw the old one out. Uh, <laughs> I, I love I love my launch day switch, but uh, I think there's something really wonderful about this. And then lastly, I would say the, the sticks are pretty much identical. All of that works Pretty much I can, from what I can tell, yeah. Um, and in terms of adding game cards and SD cards, all of that identical to the placement right down to the original one. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, so what don't you like about it? So there are a couple things that are like starting to bug me already. One of the weirdest things that I totally wasn't expecting, uh, if you're playing with headphones, this isn't an issue, but if, you're, if you don't have headphones and you have the speakers on this turned up, the whole system will vibrate. 
<laughs> it doesn't have any rumble in it. That's one of the, the losses that I are, make me sad. But like occasionally, like music will get like a little bit trebly, yep. and it just vibrates the whole thing. And it's really annoying, actually. Um, so if you're playing games like I was playing Sayonara Wild Hearts on it, which is a very like music-driven game, the entire time my fingers were just tingling, like they were buzzing. It was yeah. like a phone vibration just through the whole system. Now, another thing worth mentioning is that the launch day switch has pretty sizable speakers on the back. You can see these big grills up here. I originally thought it was these up here. These are actually vents. It's got to breathe. Uh, whereas the new Switch Lite has the same sort of vents on top. They're much tinier, but the uh, speakers on the back are smaller as well. And you have these kind of tiny little slits at the very bottom. I'm not sure if those are speakers or, or it's breathing through vents, there. Who knows? Either way, I mean, this thing's got to breathe, right? It's got to, it's, it's got to get its, you know, its heat out. You yeah. notice that downloading games, it got pretty warm. Yeah, so. plugged in, it has the same sort of heating things as the base switch. I can't tell yet if it's any better or worse. It mm -hmm. seems pretty much the same. And, and that's kind of a lot of the things that are more the, the drawbacks of this system, right? I think it's annoying. I understand why it can't dock, right? Because it is, it feels like a handheld device. It very much does feel in line with something like a Game Boy Advance rather than the Switch. Yep. Um, but it is a bummer that it can't dock. It just doesn't make sense to me why it can't, right? Like, functionally speaking. Um, it, it's annoying that there's no rumble. It is annoying that there's no auto brightness adjustment because it doesn't have this light sensor. So if you're going through, like if you're on the train and you're going through tunnels and in and out of things like that, it's gonna be a little annoying to use in that regard. Right. Um, there's just a lot of little things that are missing from the Switch that make me go like, oh yeah, this is this is $100 cheaper and they right. had to cut some corners. Like for example, the fact that it doesn't have a, uh, a kickstand makes local co-op games pretty much very, very hard to play, right? Like we managed with two people on Smash, but I wouldn't ever want to play Overcooked on this thing, right? right. You wouldn't want four people you sitting around and dealing with that. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, it has motion controls and the motion controls in something like Zelda for aiming the bow works fine because that's still subtle little movements, but anything like running fast in Mario Odyssey where you have to shake the whole system or the weird hammer physics puzzles that are motion controlled in Zelda's shrines are just terrible with this thing <laughs> because you can't like you're to do the hammer thing you have to you can't see the screen you're moving right, the whole right. device and, and that was always that was always a problem when you're playing in handheld mode mm -hmm. on the switch but you could you know prop it up and take off your joy-con and do it that way and you don't have that flexibility here and it's noticeable it just makes some games worse yeah and that's just for individual moments in incredibly popular games like mario odyssey and breath of the wild but there's also entire games like mario party where you just straight up can't play them on the Switch. Yeah. Because you'll need detached Joy-Cons to actually register movements, and that's fundamentally impossible here. And so you could, right? Again, this is one of those things where it's like you could buy $160 worth of extra Joy-Con controllers and then probably a $20 or $30 stand yep. and have four people crowd around a smaller screen and play Mario Party that way. But you shouldn't, right? Yeah. Like, you just shouldn't do that. Yeah. And that's not what this is for but it, it, it's something that people need to know that just because it can play those games doesn't mean it's the right device to do so. So speaking of which, finally, uh, to wrap things up, uh, obviously you have a, a, a you know, uh, now two pretty awesome options in terms of like entry point Nintendo Switch systems. Yeah. Um, I would say that the this one is so, sort of more catered towards like a younger audience, commuters, um, whereas the other one, you know, in lieu of getting a, a fully fledged pro model, which has not happened yet, <laughs> uh, is something for somebody who wants a little more versatility and sort of like, I, I would say, uh, options, right? Yeah. So what would, what, what would you say to somebody who wanted to buy a Switch this Friday, the 20th, when this is available, which is the one that they should go for? Uh, it's a really personal question, to be honest. I think the, the my biggest takeaway right now, uh, and I still have to use a lot of it, right? This is a review in progress. We're gonna have a final review next week. Um, but my biggest takeaway right now is that these are both great devices, right? They have an amazing library of games. I love the portability of them. The, the graphics obviously are weaker than a lot of other systems, but for what you're getting in the package, it's really impressive. Right. Either way, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, I mean, this thing's gonna play The Witcher this year. Like, right. That's insane. That's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But it's sort of a personal question of, do you value cheaper with a really, like a better form factor in a, that's mobile only, or are you willing to pay a little more to get a bigger screen and a lot more features, right? right. A lot more flexibility, a lot more versatility. And that's the question that honestly, like we can't 
answer for people. It's it's just a matter of, am I willing to spring $100 to get a slightly clunkier thing that can do a lot more, mm -hmm. or is $200 the cheaper price point better for this strictly handheld system? Yeah. I know a lot of people that bought a launch day Switch and have never docked it once. Yeah. You know, and so then this is something that makes more sense for them, right? Yeah. I know a lot of other people that, you know, like to switch between the two, and it's in the title of the system, <laughs> and, and play multiplayer games on their TV, but also bring it on the train and the plane and stuff like that. And so obviously the bigger version is your best bet. But all things considered, uh, you now have multiple options for Nintendo Switch at multiple price points, and we will be talking about all of these things for a very long time here at IGN, and also on our weekly Nintendo show, Nintendo Voice Chat. So tune into those things. For all things video games, Nintendo Switch, and systems otherwise, everything, uh, keep it locked right here to IGN. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you.